Hmm. All right, um, I grew up in a Christian home. Yeah, I grew up in a Christian home, um, and I believed. And I would say I became a Christian when I was probably seven years old. I don't remember the exact time, but I remember that I had truly accepted Christ as my personal Savior, that I had prayed the prayer, and that I truly believed it. Just because you go to church and give money in the alt you know, offering pl plate doesn't mean you're necessarily a Christian, you know. You have to make a profession of faith and all that. And I, that was the first actual time that I had, in my heart, of my own accord, decided that I need to make a profession of my belief in Christ. So I really accepted the faith and, and began growing spiritually my senior year of high school, and I've been walking with the Lord for about three years since. Like I said, when I met God when I was 16, it was... It was such a beautiful time because I started hearing from him and just really enjoying knowing him and felt like felt like we we're friends and I was getting to know him as a person, you know. Gave my life to Christ and, and became a became a Christian. And um, from that moment on life was a little bit easier and it was it was nice. It was <laughs> like a, a a weight has been lifted off my shoulder because I knew that God did love me. I knew that I had a void in my heart that couldn't be filled with anything else. You know, not a number of friends, not a relationship or my family or anything I would do. And so when I met God, um, He changed my life around. And so um, it's like a, a new reality, you know, your eyes see new things, you, you see life in a different way. So my faith in Christ has always been strong, I've always gone to church. and. I actually went to a private middle school, so I had a, the opportunity to learn a lot about the Bible and, um, you know, memorize scripture and spend a lot of time in the Word and really grow in those times. Um, in high school, you know, I went to a public high school, but I always attended Bible, school, Bible study and I was involved in some really good youth groups, not only with my church, but another citywide youth group. I believe in Jesus. I think that that's the, the core foundational thing that, that holds what I, my, my belief system together. Um, I got saved when I was seven years old, um, had read like one of the wordless books in, in children's church and, and had made one out of the colored construction paper. And I think that that was like the uh, foundational thing for me that I, I went back to um, once I did hear the pastor deliver a sermon on what it means to ask Jesus to come and live in your heart. God desires us so much to have a personal relationship with Him. That's why we're created. We're created to commune with God, to worship God. He has come down from heaven. He has come down. He has made Himself incarnate. He has laid in a manger, you know, a feeding trough to be with us. I've always known that he's there, and that's been a blessing. I've never actually had the moment of, I hate God, or, or I'll turn away from him, because I just know that he's there. It's just that simple. And so I uh, got really involved with that church, and uh, was involved with the youth group there, was a youth leader, was president of the Christian Club in high school. Um, all the while going through this, uh, I admitted to myself, slightly, that I knew I was gay when I was in junior high. I think that probably in junior high is when I realized the feelings that I have were, were probably pretty different from what I should be feeling. All the other boys started talking about the girls. You know, they started talking about the girls, oh, this one's pretty, and they started talking about, you know, sex in explicitly, and, and I, just, I just didn't get it. I'm like, yeah, she's pretty, but so what? I, I thought, well, 
you know, they say don't worry about they they tell you not don't worry if you if you don't if you, if you don't like girls yet don't worry it'll happen so I didn't worry and so I just went 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 about school doing school stuff you know trying to get good grades and all of my friends started attracting or developing attractions for the opposite gender and I was becoming attracted to them and it was very very strange because I didn't think they went through a similar phase but I was just writing it off as a phase um, I was hoping that I grew out of it and I sort of grew into it um, throughout middle school and just realized that something was distinctly different and, and I was going down a path that nobody else I knew was was dealing with. And um, I remember riding my bike to like the mall and this perfectly built guy ran by me <laughs> and I almost crashed my bicycle because it was the first time I was just like, wow, that was, wow, he was, <laughs> he was really good looking. I like that and I didn't really think much about it though because I still didn't quite understand what it meant and and I kind of noticed like my mom would she would you know see a cute girl and kind of like push her towards me or ask hey do you think she was cute or whatever and I you know no not really and as time would go on I'd notice that you know sometimes the guys were pretty good looking but the girls never would and I didn't have anybody to talk to about it and it and it started kind of sinking in hmm why why am I starting to get attracted to guys but not girls like that's it's really kind of kind of weird you know and the whole year or two before that you know I learned people that do that or like that like people of the same sex were wrong and and evil and and were going to hell and God didn't like them and they're pretty much condemned and uh, so it kind of started uh, kind of a downward spiral where I started getting really depressed because like God doesn't like me God hates me I'm, <laughs> I'm going to hell and I didn't have anybody to talk to uh, about it because I was, I was afraid to I mean since I since I had even the slightest feeling for a guy I tried to not have a feeling for a guy I mean like there was I mean I would have done anything like I prayed nonstop and I would like force myself to like objectify women that I would see on TV. Like I mean, you know, like Baywatch of all shows. I mean like they have that opening with that guy in the speed or whatever. I would like force myself to look at like the women who will have like large breasts and be like, that's attractive, like that's you know, really hot. Like I want a girl like that. And yet like I knew girls like that who were interested in me and I was like, uh oh, no. It was it was terrible. I would like it was horrible. Like, I shouldn't be objected. like, that's not, like, I thought it was more Christian to objectify women than to be naturally att attracted to guys. I just thought, I suppose my hormones are going wild and I'm just starved for any sort of physical attention. And it didn't occur to me when I was in high school that, you know, I could be gay. And even into, like, later high school, my senior year, I maintained my, I'm going to have a girlfriend status, and I went to military school and had my long distance girlfriend and then we broke up and then I found a local girl and then we broke up because I, I wouldn't make out with her deeply enough, so. I dated one boy and it was really, like, really casual and I felt like really good at, you know, like purity and all of these issues and then um, I never really knew like why I wasn't interested in boys or anything, but I never equated it with anything because it wasn't, it wasn't really that big of a deal, you know. Seemed to be attracted to the friends that I had, the girlfriends that I had, a little more so than seemed normal for other girl-girl interactions. Um, started to recognize that that wasn't something that the rest of my friends seemed to be feeling. Um, and that's when I kind of realized that this was a factor in my life, you know, that there's a possibility that I might be gay, but it was more of a very much in the back of my mind, something that I wanted to avoid thinking about. Uh, my boyfriend and I were together, boyfriend, were together for five years and we only kissed once. In hindsight, we weren't really dating. <laughs> it was more that we had this close friendship that we didn't know how to label any other way. I, um, when I was about 16, I fell in love with my best friend then. Um, uh, that's when I kind of realized I was, you know, I like women. 
But what I really, really knew I was gay was when I was um, at MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University, and I fell in love with this girl named Whitney, and it was horrible. I felt, I felt so bad for her, and that's what I knew. I, I, felt, I felt more for women than I've ever felt for men, you know? Um, when I first started putting words to being gay, I was when I was in high school, and it honestly was something that I thought I'd never tell anyone about. I, I had visions of being on my deathbed and like telling one person before I died. I, it was that foreign to me. And then I, oh, and then I told one of my friends, like kind of in a half joking matter, like secretly, and I whispered it in his ear. and. Um, he freaked out and gave me this look of shock on his face, and I was like, ha, 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 just kidding. He's like, man, you shouldn't joke about things like that. And I'm like, I know, I know. Um, and then I didn't tell anybody again for seven years. That was a very hard night because I was there with, a, with my peer counseling team. I was, I was a part of a, t a counseling team at my campus, and we were, we were there to study diversity of all things. And this movie was about diversity and accepting people of different races. Um, but it featured a gay character and it was really hard for me because on the way back I mean we didn't even talk about the race issue it was all about the gay boy who kissed another boy and how how gross that was and how many jokes we could come up with about it and I felt so devastated because I knew they were talking about me and I couldn't say a word I just sat in the back and completely I don't know where I went um, for a while but I knew that it wasn't a good place that night was probably the hardest night of my life because, because my friends, my counseling team, proved to me that I wasn't accepted, that they didn't accept me. And so how could I accept myself? So, so that's when I said that I'm gay, I'm gay. And, and I knew that from what I was taught from my Christian campus experience and from my upbringing in the church and from my parents and from society that that being gay made me evil, made me unrighteous. And I remembered a, a verse in James that talked about the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And since I knew I wasn't righteous, um, I completely stopped praying. I completely stopped caring about spiritual things. And I was a youth pastor at the time of a church um, when this all went down. And it was really hard for me to go to church, to interact with young people, and put on this, this happy face of, let's love Jesus, let's pray together, let's, let's worship God. And inside I knew that I wasn't even allowed, that, that something in me made me disqualified for ministry, and made me disqualified from, from being accepted by God, being, by, being accepted by my peers. And so it was just a really hard time where I, I felt I don't even know the word. I felt like a fraud. I felt like a spiritual fraud. I was like, well, gay's wrong, you know. So why am I having these feelings? So I kept praying and praying and praying, and I would go to my bedroom and um, cry and cry and cry, like, you know, Lord, take this away, you know, take it away. I said, God, please, I don't want these feelings. I don't want to do something that, you know, is against you. I don't want to be, I don't want to be cast into the lake of fire because I have feelings for the same sex and not the opposite sex. So I really did. I truly asked God, please take these feelings away. I, there was a lot of times when it was so hard that, you know, I wanted to commit suicide, like I said earlier. And... Um, but he didn't take them away, and that even made it hurt even more, because I felt, why isn't he taking these, these evil feelings away? Why isn't he making me normal? <sighs> to go from the spiritual good guy in the family, uh, the little theologian, to the kid who people don't know is going straight to hell. I mean, that's what I thought at the time. Um, it was devastating, and for that reason, in high school, I was such a torn kid. Kind of got to a sad part of my life. I ended up just kind of 
withdrawing from everybody and, and not hanging out with friends and and uh, the rest of my family has also had that same viewpoint. I remember one Christmas we were with my very church going family and uh, sitting around and Ellen was doing something. It was the 4th, uh, or not the 4th of July, it was uh, New Year's. And uh, Ellen came on the TV and my, and my whole, my cousins were like, oh, oh gosh, it's a, a lesbian, how disgusting. She's so gross, have you seen her, blah, 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 on and on. And I, I just remember a part in there where somebody in my family was like, ah, they just need to take all gay people, just round them up in the streets, just shoot them all. And, I, and I'm sitting here like, you know, this is my family talking about something I think I'm going through. And it, it pretty much just scared me. I was like, that's it. <laughs> why am I, why, I'm done. You know, this is, this is horrible. And uh, it really just sent me in a real bad suicidal depression. And uh, no one saw me for a long time. I'd wake up, go to school, come back home, stay in my room. And that was about it for about two years. Um, and there was a lot of things there that were counseling worthy. Um, not being able to sleep, being uh, depressed, being terrified at night, uh, having night terrors, um, not being able to focus on anything at school because this question of am I gay became this all-consuming mental question where it's just going around and around and around. You're like, oh, why? Shut up. And, you know, sitting in English class reading Grapes of Wrath going, am I gay? <laughs> doesn't fit. <laughs> First thing that came to my mind is it was a test of like faith. And then like, well, what kind of test of faith is it? And is it one like, okay, I'm going to tempt you your entire life with liking something you can't have and see how you deal with it. You know, that was my immediate thought and I was like, great. Now I'm gonna have to be like a monk or something. My mom actually asked me one day, are you gay? And uh, I, of course, went, no, no, of course not. And what's interesting is that's the first time I ever really thought about it. Am I gay? Could I be gay? And uh, of course, at 15, I was, I was very dead set on oh, being gay is wrong. So I, I can't be gay. I'm not gay. It's, that's a choice. I'm not going to make that choice. You tried to be straight because you don't want to be like, People say that you choose to be gay. I don't know why anybody would choose to be excluded. Like me, conservative Christian, raise your hands, play music, involved in the church. Why would I choose to be gay? I didn't even know what gay was. I was like, I didn't know there was a word for it until like the end of eighth grade. And so, I mean, I didn't choose. I mean, I don't really see why people would choose to be, you know, be ridiculed and stuff and you know go through their days getting picked on and made fun of I don't know why someone would choose that Basically, at some point during my sophomore or junior year, I started um, realizing about my attractions and it was really hard for me. And like I was telling you before, it wasn't like uh, I felt freedom and I was like, oh, this is who I am finally, you know, it all makes sense. It was more like, oh no, you know, I need to find a solution for this soon and I need to fix it. And so I did try to. So I, I joined different groups, online groups, and um, I, I even went to like a group called Homosexual Anonymous in my city. I did, I did um, get involved with really, you know, I met really awesome people at different ministries I went to, from Exodus, from Love, Love Went Out, from um, online support groups. I thought it was a likely avenue, uh, changing my orientation would be a likely avenue that I would have to take because of how I grew up. Um, 
uh, every morning listening to Dr. James Dobson family commentary, uh, Pat Robertson, um, sitting in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. I remember when they would talk about gay people. I remember my Sunday school teacher, uh, we were driving to the zoo or something and her grandson and I were in the back seat and he, I must have been like eight years old and he made some comment about that he had seen two women holding hands and my grand or his grandma said something along the lines of, oh, well, that must have been a mom and her daughter. And he said, no, 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 they were the same age. And then she said, well, then there's something very wrong with them. That's sick. And of all the things for me to remember from my Sunday school teacher, that stuck with me. And so if you're sick, then you can get better, right? I mean, if this was something that wasn't God's plan for my life, then that should be something that should be able to be changed. I should be able to be healed. Uh, there's nothing that we can be tempted with that we can't bear. You know, uh, with my understanding of how things worked, I should have been able to overcome this and live a nice straight life. I mean, there's books of people who had done it, <laughs> love one out and whatnot. I thought, this is, this is crazy, this is something that is completely contrary to God's will for my life, and you know, I'm going to do what it takes to get it taken care of. Everyone I talked to was either a Christian who said, who was a biblical scholar who said, gay is wrong and you're going to hell, or they were like, Bible, it's a book of stories, and neither one was acceptable to me, because for me, Gay is not a big deal. Gay is, gay is nothing. What mattered to me was my relationship with God. And if it was jeopardizing my relationship with God, there was no mountain too high, there was no river too wide that I was going to separate myself from it. So if gay was wrong with God, I was just going to take it off. I knew it was going to be hard, but I'm like, you know what? God's everything. God is all. So he's going to give me the strength to do it. So if it's really something that he doesn't want in my life, I'll just sacrifice it to him. I think for me, I wanted to change because you grow up you grow up hearing about sin in the church and so i i grew up hearing about sin but then on top of that being gay is is the ultimate sin you know and so you find out you're gay and it's like i'm ruined you know and so i just i had all of this in my head and programmed there and i never even asked god what he thought about it because i i just thought i knew that that he hated the sin, you know, more than any other sin, he hated the sin. And so that's why initially I was just like, I have to change. Like, there's no option but change. And um, so then that took me to the ex-gay ministry. And being there, I, I guess I was really open to change. And, and really, because it was like a live-in program, I assumed I'm going to live here and I'm going to come out straight you know I'm gonna I'm gonna come out different because I just thought this has to be it this has to work you know I had no reason to believe that that wasn't going to be my experience God would heal me if that was really what was wrong with me then God would heal me like saying to somebody for the very first time I'm struggling with homosexuality was just it I sat there for, for like five minutes just in silence because I, I couldn't say it to him. He's like, you're going to say it, and we're going to sit here till you say it. And he says, because we can't move on till you can admit it. And um, so I admitted it, and uh, we immediately went into some prayer and uh, praying that this, this demon would be removed from me and I'd be healed of this. and everything would change and I would be better. And um, talked a lot about how everybody has that has one big sin they really struggle with or one big thing they really struggle with. Uh, and for some people it's just praying every day or reading their Bible. And for some people it's homosexuality. Um, and at the time it seemed really logical. It made a lot of sense to me. So I went to a counselor, a Christian counselor, who um, James Dobson actually recommends um, on the West Coast, I think, out of, out of the three states, Washington, Oregon, California, he only recommends this one guy who happened to be in the city I lived in, in Oregon. 
So it, was, it seemed very suspicious. I'm like, okay, God, I see what you're doing. I see that you, you've provided this wonderful person for me to go to, to change, to fix me. And so I, I went to this counselor for two years. But it was funny because he said, the very first meeting, he asked me why I was there. And I told him that I didn't want to be gay anymore. And he looked at me and he said, Rob, you'll probably always be gay. I can't change your feelings but we can change your behaviors. And so that was very discouraging to me because I'm like, well, that's not good enough. And, and the reason I stuck with it, with it for two years was because I was going to prove them wrong. I was going to prove them that I'm not only going to change my behaviors, I'm going to change my feelings. And so I did. I stuck with it for two years, this ex-gay counseling or whatever you want to call it. And even though he told me at the very beginning that I want to change my feelings, I... I had hope and faith that they would be changed, but they didn't change. And he would keep asking me about my parents. Like I'd be like, you know, I really don't want to talk about my parents. Like I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with talking about my parents. I'm perfectly open with that. But it's like I'd rather talk about the issue at hand. He'd be like, well, wait, uh, were you close with your father? And were you, you know, did your mother? And I was like, yeah, you know, we're, we're all very close, close family. He read to me since I was, you know, a zygote. Um, oh, I went everywhere with him, I, you know, my mom was very, I, I don't know, like, I don't know what to say, I don't know what the buzz answer is, but like, I, like that doesn't seem to be the issue, and he, he would never talk about the issue other than like, that it was horribly wrong. I think there are a lot more on the lines of they think it was maybe something when you were growing up, I heard a lot about the absentee father and uh, all the stuff like that, and, and how that, that that probably affected me, and that's why I'm this way. And of course, my thing was, well, why am I gay and my two brothers and my sister straight? It seemed like every step that I took in that direction didn't fit. Um, what they were saying was the reason that I was gay it had nothing to do with me. I had a good relationship with my dad. I had no problems with nothing that ever happened to me. Like I was, I had a very lucky upbringing. I didn't fit any of their criteria and that was very problematic for me <laughs> because I felt like once again I didn't fit in and that this wasn't going to work either. And when you know as much as I prayed, as much as I tried, I wasn't dating. It was not like I was dating or doing anything. I was just, it was just feelings. So as much as I tried, it, it wasn't going away. And I kept praying and praying and praying. I'm like, my gosh, why can't I just be... This was the one thing that made me abnormal. We had a prayer closet at the ministry. And I, I'd go in the prayer closet and just, just cry out to God. And just, I'd cry my eyes out. Because not, this, was, this was a little bit closer towards the... Uh, after I'd been doing this for a while. And I wasn't seeing any progress, and it was, it was, it took its toll on me. It really, it really hurt my relationship with God because I became frustrated with Him, and I, uh, or not necessarily with Him, just with everything. I was like, God, this isn't working. It's what am I doing wrong? Why, why can't I do this? They keep telling me if if I really want this, then it'll happen. I really want this. Why isn't it happening? I, I, I don't want to be one of those people that's not in your grace, God. I, I just I just want to be your servant and follow your will. And I finally remember one day we were talking and I don't remember what I said, something about about having to deal, deal with stuff. And they, they said, have you, wait a minute, have you ever considered the possibility that that God won't change you? and that you're going to have to deal with this for the rest of your life. You know, maybe you just need to accept the fact that you're gay. And I didn't know what to say. Because I, I don't think I had honestly thought of that, like that, you know, the rest of my life. You know? And that, how would I, how would I come to, I didn't know if I was capable of, of coming to terms with that. Um, my pastor prayed for me and anointed me with oil. And then at the end of the meeting he said, okay, so your, your mom and dad are the only people who know about this. 
and me, and we'd like to keep it that way. You know, I, I encourage you not to share this information with anyone else. And that was that. We, we all went on our merry ways. And uh, I, I never really brought it up with my parents again. I felt uncomfortable talking to any other Christians about it because of how fearful my pastor seemed about the whole topic. And that made me afraid as well, afraid of rejection. And I kind of felt like I was a disease. <laughs> and so um, I decided to go to a Christian college. I was interested in that anyways, but I felt like this might this might just be the answer to cure me, you know, if I could go to a Christian college and really focus on my relationship with God as well as my education, this might go away. And here I am five years later and it hasn't gone away. <laughs> so um, still went to church, was real faithful at church and uh, eventually found some gay friends around school and college and um, when college came around my dad uh, kind of found out that I was hanging around with a lot of gay people at college through friends of friends and uh, brought me in to the bedroom. My mom was sitting there crying and sat me down and pretty much told me, you know, I tried to give you help, tried to help you change, you know it's wrong. And I, I don't understand why you like that kind of thing. I don't understand why you it's disgusting, it's gross. Why do you think God would ever be okay with it? I, I won't understand, actually said some really vulgar things about sex acts and how they were disgusting and pretty much told me that I had to leave. I couldn't stay in that house anymore. He, he loves me, he'll love me forever, but if I was gonna be gay, then I was, I was no longer welcome. I couldn't bring that kind of sin into the house and as father of the household I had to go and um, so that, that was about it my mom really didn't say much and that, that was it I, uh, I moved out my parents are not accepting of it at all um, my mom tried my mom tried to tell me tried to tell me that I'm not gay at all that you know I'm just going through a phase and things like that. And um, they're always telling me that it's wrong and that I need to change and things like that. Yes, I told my parents and that's been an interesting, an interesting experience because my parents don't, they see, I think they still believe that it's something that I'll grow out of. Um, I'm sure that plenty of people hear the phrases, you know, you just haven't right, met the right girl and things like that. And, and that would really, really well describe my parents. Um, my parents think that um, if I spend about a year in ex gay ministry that I should be completely straight. So they keep asking me, you know, how is it going? And I think that they really mean how far are you, how close are you to being straight now? Because that's what they really are hoping for. I remember the day that I came out, my mom went ran into the bathroom. We only had one bathroom in my house, but she ran into the bathroom and she sat there and laid in the floor on the linoleum and was screaming at the top of her lungs, my son's going to burn in hell. My son's going to burn in hell. And I stood there and, and cried and cried. And then uh, I remember another time after, after I'd told my mother we were sitting in church and there was a, the, the minister was on vacation, so there was a substitute and he was this old guy, and he's like, and he's like, where the church is going today, it's going downhill. We're letting in the homosexuals and all the other, you know, all these other things. And after the, the service, my my mother was like, I can't, can't believe you sat there while he was talking like that. And I'm like, <laughs> people say stuff like that. It's as if they're telling you that you're somehow worse than other people because you have these feelings, and that's what that's how I felt in church, and I felt, I just felt really lost. Like, I don't know, I didn't have anyone to go to to talk about it. Uh, I couldn't talk about it with my family. I couldn't come out to anybody um, in the church. I was terrified, just beyond words. To be honest with you, I, I don't go out of my way to be an out and proud gay man to the people in my life. If I get close enough to somebody that they they can tell and they're starting to pick up on the signs and they ask, 
I'll tell them. It's not that I'm embarrassed or ashamed. It's just, I live in Kansas. This is the home of Fred Phelps. I, I don't want to put myself out there because I know there are people who do not like gay people and they would especially not like gay people who are going to, you know, quote the Bible to them. I mean, that would just be the end of it. I, I would be, my head would be on a platter somewhere. People would be chasing me with pitchforks. I was, it was really hard for me to come out on one hand because I felt like I was kind of in this position of, I mean, everyone kind of knew me as a Christian. I was in leadership positions in all these ministries and I had this column in the school paper and people just knew that I was a Christian. So for me to come out was huge because I, I really felt like I was losing all my cred. I actually, two of my friends from school, like I, I think I'm just never serious with them. And I was like, well, you know, I have to tell them, like I have to, you know, and I was like drinking tons of water because I was so nervous. And I was like, guys, I, I have to tell you something. And they're like, no, you don't. I was like, no, I, it's something serious. And they're like, it's going to be a joke, John. Just like save it. And I was like, this is not good. Finally, at the end of my second year of college, I decided, you know, in order for me to be honest with these men who were in my Bible study about my walk with God and sharing my testimony, I need to tell them about this. And um, just because, again, it's had such a huge impact on how I see God and how I see how I've lived my life and, um, you know, the relationships that I have with them, the friendships that I have with them. And um, it's just such a huge part. I can't leave it out and still tell an honest testimony. So I decided that was what I want to do. And I started talking to um, my small group leader. And he didn't really think it was a good idea. And then we started talking to um, one of the pastors for this larger ministry and um, he didn't really think it was such a good idea and before I actually gave my testimony at the at one of the meetings of our Bible study um, what the pastor who had been my small group leader the year before the one I actually came out to first out of everybody um, suggested that I find another place to worship when I return to school in the fall. 99% of my friends were Christian and not a one of them would stand by me after they knew I was gay. Um, they would confront me in love, <laughs> but uh, definitely it wasn't a positive experience as far as the church went. People would call me up and um, I would really like to have really intense voices. Like people used to, people always used to call me up like, hey, let's have lunch. And now it, after I came out, it was like, I would really like to just sit down and have lunch with you. I'm like, you're gonna bring a Bible this big like that thick and a concordance and and sure enough they would show up and they'd be like I truly would like to talk to you about some verses out of scripture that I wanted to make sure that you had seen I'm like, I just want to have lunch I had CDC reports brought to me to prove to me how dangerous it was to be gay and I didn't understand that because I wasn't out having sex I was like I'm not gonna catch anything <laughs> just being gay I'm, and I, I had people telling me that I had to repent from my ways. I was like, but I'm doing the same thing I did before. I was single before I realized I was gay. I'm, I'm single now. I'm, I'm not doing anything. What it, and that was the big response that a, the number of people, they were like, well, you can't do this. And I was like, what am I doing? I don't, I don't see what I'm doing. I'm not doing anything. I had a really close friend in college who sort of like a sister relationship and when I came out it was like wow and the conversation was over and then talking about it just over the years you know your the fact that you're gay is really challenging my faith Okay, um, I know you love God, but how could you be gay? Um, I know you've tried to change it. I know that it hasn't worked. But still, this is really something that I can't get my head around. And so it's, it's continual. Um, I've had, I haven't had bad experiences like a lot of people have with coming out to friends. But I think the, the biggest response I get is just they're, they're really hurt that I'm gay. And so it hurts them and then, you know, they just, they want to see me different. They, they, and I think, I think their, hearts are, their hearts are pure that they genuinely think it's a sin and they want me to be healed. And so I've had really hard experiences where my friends will write and say like, 
hey, I'm sorry you're still believing a lie. I'm sorry you're still stuck in that. And and they pray for me, and I, I know that they love me, but they don't they don't really want to, you know, ask questions about it. They just know. There were times when I said to myself that obviously me being gay isn't a choice because I would never choose this. And maybe my Christianity is. And if they can't coexist, I'm always going to be this way unless God heals me for some reason. But that didn't look like much of an option because that had been something I've been praying for for years and definitely hadn't made any headway on. And um, so in the end, I think the only reason I was still a Christian was because I needed Christ. I mean, everything else kind of faded away, friendships and relationships. But I couldn't, I couldn't continue living in the world without that, without that reality of having Christ in my life. Things didn't make sense to me. Uh, I didn't have peace. I knew what the truth was. I mean, I'd known it since I was a little kid, and maybe I didn't really experience it till I was in my teens. But since I did experience it, I couldn't willingly leave it out of my life. And so the end of that was that it was either being gay or being a Christian. And I eventually had to choose that above all I would do whatever God wanted me to do. And I didn't expect it, that it would be with me being okay with being gay, but here I am. It, it's a, a scary place sometimes, but also it's really awesome to just be real with God and, and be honest about it and not pretend, you know, not pretend that I still don't feel attracted to this person and not pretend that I don't have questions about this and not pretend that I don't see certain things, you know, and so I don't know what the future holds, so I, I can't tell you that this is where I'm going to be tomorrow or next week or a month or a year from now, so for me, the only way to deal with this, it's day by day. I feel like a lot of the mainstream gay community has been hurt by the uh, Christian community that being a gay Christian and talking to them in love, to another gay person in love that wasn't a Christian, they would feel almost attacked because they have such scars from the Christian community. Uh, I don't know of any gay person that's completely unscathed. There's far too many gay people that have feel the church has just forgotten about them and doesn't care about them. And that's one thing that just really bothers me because I know the foundation of my life is church and God and I don't know where I'd be without God. And, uh, and it, it's, it just it hurts me so much that people don't feel welcome in their own churches because of something they can't even help. There's a lot, there's a lot of confusion on the part of the gay world as to what it means to be a Christian, and there's a lot of confusion on the part of the church of what it means to be gay. And I think that there's so much confusion that no one has stopped and said, well, why don't we go ask them? Like, why, do, why don't we as a church go ask the gay people what their lives are about? And why don't we as gay people go ask the church what it means? You know, instead of just assuming we know, why don't we continue this conversation? Why don't we have this conversation? And so I guess my heart for the church would be that we would be more honest, that we would have more room to ask questions, to discuss about it, that they would be more, more patient and more proactive at understanding things, uh, that we wouldn't be a homework they have to do and solve, but we would be people to them. I mean, I have so many friends. When I was in college, I had more friends who were in the closet than I did who were out. And that, that in a lot of ways showed me that you know, this is something that's causing people. All of these people were suffering horribly. And they were really people who were really trying to find 
answers in their lives, people who are trying to deal with this in some way and who were really hurting and who felt very alone and very at, you know, their ropes were fraying. And I think the church really has the, the ability to come and love these people well and, you know, tie the fraying rope in a knot for them. You know, Jesus was all about the, the, the outcasts and, and the indigents and the sick people and the whores and the, the people that all the religious people wouldn't go near because, well, they're those people. You look at how Christ changed lives and as he sat down and had dinner um, with the tax collector and, and, and the tax collector walked away and his, his whole world has changed. Um, you know, I, I look at, so I look at gay for me as being a way that has opened my eyes to a world of seeing people beneath the surface and understanding them um, for their characters and their personalities and, and for who they really are, you know, deep down instead of, instead of just label. I think it's taught me to, to really look beyond what I think people are and let them be themselves for me and in that way I think I can learn to love them in a way that's deeper than I would have otherwise been able to do. I love Jesus. I have questions that I like to ask him, but I'm not going to stop loving Jesus. I'm going to stop asking questions and I'm going to use the Bible as my guide to try and live as Christ would have me to live. That's all I can do.